The hero police officer who was left in critical condition after the Salisbury poisoning has said his life will never be the same again after he was discharged from hospital today. Speaking about the incident for the first time, Detective Sergeant Nick Bailey, 38, said he has been overwhelmed by events since he was rushed into care following his exposure to the nerve agent Mivichok on March 4. In a statement read by Wiltshire Police Chief Constable Keir Pritchard on his behalf, D.S. Bailey explained that the experience of his poisoning had been completely surreal. He added, I recognize that normal, life for me will probably never be the same, and Sarah and I now need to focus on finding a new normal for us, and for our children, it comes as doctors were granted permission to take blood samples from the unconscious Sergei Skripal and daughter Yulia, who a judge said may never regain full mental capacity. In his statement, D.S. Bailey went on, People ask me how I am feeling, but there are really no words to explain how I feel right now, he added, I have spent all my time since the incident really focusing on trying to get better and trying not to think about anything else. But as I have begun to feel better, I have become aware of the widespread and enormous attention this whole incident has attracted. I find this really overwhelming, I am just a normal person with a normal life, and I don't want my wife, children, family or I to be part of that attention. I do hope the public can understand that, in a separate statement, D.S. Bailey's wife Sarah said that her, hero, husband's poisoning had been, the most traumatic event of our life. She added, it feels like our world has been turned upside down in a really short space of time. I am so grateful for the support from our immediate family and friends and the police family liaison officers through this last few weeks, I really don't know how I would have coped without them. Nick doesn't like the term hero, but he has always been a hero to me and our children, Chief Executive of Salisbury NHS Foundation Trust Kara Charles Barks, who also spoke at the press conference outside Salisbury District Hospital today, said that for reasons of patient confidentiality there would be no further discussion of the S. Bailey's condition. She also said the scribbles remained in a critical but stable condition. D.S. Bailey, a father of two, had spent almost three weeks in hospital after coming into contact with the Novichok nerve agent used to try to kill former double agent Sergei and his daughter Yulia. While being looked after his home was sealed off by forensic teams in hazmat suits searching for more traces of the deadly nerve agent. His car was also taken away for examination at the Puerto Down facility. I have been so very overwhelmed by the support cards and messages I have received, everyone has been so incredible, D.S. Bailey added. Salisbury NHS Trust Chief Ms. Charles Barks also said 48 other people sought advice from the hospital after the nerve agent attack and have been assessed and given advice. It came after Senior Judge Mr. Justice Williams made a key ruling in the Court of Protection allowing medics to take blood samples from the scripples without consent, but also added that the duo may never regain their full mental capacity. Giving his ruling, Mr. Justice Williams said an unidentified consultant who is treating the scribble said they were both heavily sedated, unable to communicate and that it was not possible to say when or to what extent either may regain mental capacity. They were both in a physically stable condition and were being treated on the basis they would wish to be kept alive, the consultant said, according to Williams' ruling at the London's Court of Protection, which makes decision over the welfare of people who are unable to do so themselves. The precise effect of their exposure on their long-term health remains unclear albeit medical tests indicate that their mental capacity might be compromised to an unknown and so far unascertained degree, Williams said in his judgment. Mr Justice Williams, who is based in the Family Division of the High Court in London, announced his decision today after analysing the case at a private hearing earlier this week. He said doctors at Salisbury NHS Foundation Trust could provide blood samples to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons OPCW. He also said trust bosses could also provide copies of medical notes to the OPCW. The judge said he had concluded that such moves were in the best interests of Mr. and Ms. Scripple. During the later press conference outside Salisbury District Hospital today, meanwhile, Wiltshire Police Chief Constable Keir Pritchard read a short statement from D.S. Bailey. The officer said, Some days we've had about 300 messages from officers, the wider police family and the public. The level of support has been unbelievable and I've tried to respond to what I can, but I want to say I have really appreciated every single message, he added, all the stories of community spirit, from the local businesses providing food and hot drinks to the officers standing for endless hours on the cordons, to the members of the public just showing their support for our work, have been quite simply overwhelming to hear about. I want to pay tribute and give my absolute and heartfelt thanks to the staff of Salisbury District Hospital.
the care I have received from the medical staff has been simply outstanding from day one, from the man that cleans the floor to the doctors giving the treatment, they have all been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you just doesn't seem enough and just doesn't convey the gratitude I feel for what they have done for me, he added, I want people to focus on the investigation, not the police officer who was unfortunate enough to be caught up in it, the ruling came as it emerged a second police officer who was investigating the Salisbury nerve agent attack is being treated in hospital for suspected poisoning. The uniformed PC is understood to have developed minor symptoms, including skin irritation, and is receiving treatment as an outpatient. He is said to have come into contact with an object that possibly had secondary contamination. A source told Mile Online, the second officer is showing potential signs of poisoning but they are very minor and not at all on the same scale as D.S. Bailey and the Scribbles. At this stage it is unclear how he became ill but it is possible that he came into contact accidentally with an object that could have had some secondary contamination. He is receiving treatment at Salisbury General Hospital as an outpatient as his symptoms are not serious enough to warrant him being kept in. Scripple, 66 and his 33-year-old daughter were found slumped on a bench in Salisbury, whilst I were on March 4 after they had gone out for a drink and a meal at an Italian restaurant. They had been exposed to a powerful nerve agent developed in Russia called Novichok. The Russian government has been blamed for the attack. Intelligence officials in the U.S. believe they were possibly exposed to the nerve agent though Scripple's car ventilation system. However, counter-terror officers from the Metropolitan Police, who are leading the investigation, are working on one strong line of inquiry that Yulia unwittingly brought over a contaminated item from Moscow. They believe that item could have been opened at Scripple's home. The huge police operation is to continue in Salisbury for several months as officers comb through various sites across the city. It has been reported that the vast scale of the investigation has meant that biochemical suits worn by terror officers are running low because they have to be removed every three hours and destroyed. However, Mile Online understands that police are to appeal for a higher grade of suite that affords greater protection because of the presence of Novichok. The source said, the suits worn by police at the moment are fine for the investigations they are used to like raiding drug laboratories or handling more basic chemicals used by suspected terrorists. The cleanup in Salisbury will also take several months because Novichok was designed specifically to avoid detection by chemical weapons inspectors. It cannot be identified via handheld chemical detection equipment or spray solutions normally used by the police to check if a toxic chemical is present. Forensic teams will have to instead painstakingly swab every surface and areas of potential contamination before the public are allowed back. Several cordons have sprung up across the city of Salisbury and Wiltshire after Scripple and Yulia were poisoned on March 4. Sites of interest include the Mill Pub, a branch of Italian chain restaurant Zitza, Scripple's home and the cemetery where his wife and son have been buried. Novichok, however, is a level up from what they are used to. This is a seriously dangerous nerve agent most likely made in a state-run laboratory somewhere in Russia. As a result, police chiefs are going to request a higher spec of biochemical suit, more like the ones used by the military, to be given to those officers in Salisbury to give them greater protection. There are also fears that stocks of biochemical suits used by the police are getting low and they may have to call upon the military for help. The source added, Novichok was developed by scientists especially to evade detection from weapons inspectors. That means that detectors carried by police to protect them from chemical and industrial toxic agents in drug and terror operations will be useless in this case. So too is the spray solution officers use which changes color to indicate the presence of a harmful chemical. The only way the police can make sure an area of 